Okay, so I first shared this brush stroke trend that was blowing up on Etsy in a video a couple of weeks ago. And then a bunch of other channels started making their own versions of it, though most of them were showing how to use Canva to do that and the Canva brush stroke uh, frames that you can use in Canva, which then led to a lot of my people asking, why was I not doing it in Canva with the brush stroke frames? And was Kittle the only option for an AI tool where this would work and so I decided to make this follow-up video to show you a couple of my favorite AI tools and how this design can look different depending on which one you want to use and at the end I will show you a brand new tool that I started using that has a super simple way to easily change the colors or the elements within these brush stroke trends that literally takes just a few seconds if you have no idea what I'm talking and missed that video do be sure to watch that one here first so that you're caught up on what I'm talking about when I'm showcasing the different outputs that we'll get from different AIs. And so you have an understanding of what types of designs these actually work well for. So before we get started, let me clarify why I'm not just generating something in AI and then adding them into a Canva frame. So Canva frames can be really, really awesome, but you will run into a unique or quality factor, meaning that anybody who is using these Canva frames, regardless of where you get them from, so you could be creating them yourself, those will have the most uniqueness to them. However, if you are buying them or you are getting them from Etsy or Creative Fabrica or anywhere else where it is the same template that everyone else is going to be using, your designs are going to look very similar, meaning they are all going to have the exact same brush stroke frame because everybody else is using that though your design will change depending on what you add in it it will still maintain the same type of size and structure if that makes sense the next reason that i am using purely ai and not a canva frame is the realism and the detail that every generation comes out with in these very uniquely hand painted types of strokes within the design and finally each tool depending on which one that you are using is going to have a vastly wildly different output than the next one from texture to the color palette to the design style and the overall creativity, it's going to be different every time. So again, here are some of the examples of the brush stroke trend. Again, they work really, really well for sweatshirt or t-shirt or top designs. And so these are just a few of the ones that I was able to put up last week. And so you do just wanna keep in mind the type of short that you're designing for and what works well for this space. Again, be sure to watch that video if you want to see how I'm finding design ideas that would work well for this particular design trend. So let's take a look first at Mid Journey. So this one was surprising to me because I didn't think that I would honestly like Mid Journey um, as much as I ended up because it's usually very realistic in the terms of like it's very natural and I tend to stay away from that as far as my own designs. You just saw the brush stroke designs that I did. They tended to be more poppy and bright and colorful and cartoonish, but I actually like these um, a lot because of how realistic that they were. It actually looks like real paint and I will have this prompt down in the description. I'm using the same prompt all across all of these different AI tools so that you can get an idea of what the prompt looks like regardless of which tool. Um, and so that will stay the same. But this one, um, like I could see uses for each of these different ones. I really like the dripping effect that this one did down here. And then I also like how this one um, was just really unique and the flowers are overlaying this. I prefer the elements to be coming out from the brush strokes and not all constrained within the silhouette of the brush stroke, if that makes sense. And some of the AI tools do it better than others. But for Mid Journey, I could see these designs working best with like the positivity or affirmation or even Christian designs and religious designs um, because it's very natural and it 
works well with that niche with positive type sayings or quotes. So personally, that is what I would use Mid Journey for if I was going to use the journey to create these types of designs. Okay, so over here in Kittle, this is the effect with that particular prompt that you're going to get. Um, it is still very poppy um, as far as like, they don't look super realistic, but a lot of people like this style and it's how I actually made all of my designs that you saw on my shop right now were made with Kittle. So this prompt probably could be edited a lot to get a different result as far as um, the types of flowers and of course changing the colors, um, but this is what it looks like in Kittle. I'm not gonna go much more into it because um, the other video that I did is all showcasing Kittle's outputs with these particular types of design trends. So again, this could be theoretically used across all different types of niches, which is what I did with mine. Some were seasonal, some were holiday related, some were in the positivity niche, and then some had like funny sayings. So so next over here in my designs, I used Dolly 3 and Ideogram version 2 to get these. So um, as you can see, it looks very similar to Kittle. The flowers actually look a little bit more realistic than Kittle's, but not quite anywhere near as what they look like in Mid Journey, but something that could still totally be usable. So moving on down here is the outputs using Ideogram version 2. So sometimes it did well with it and sometimes it did a different type of collage, which this one is actually really cute to use. I have seen some of them doing um, where it is just three in a row and then rows of three. So it would be three, six, nine. So this one would work. You could duplicate the top of this and have this or you could generate another row. I don't necessarily like this one because I think the silhouettes are really strange looking on that. Um, and so I wouldn't use that one. And then this one down here, I thought it was funny because it actually did silhouettes of people in here, which is still kind of an interesting output. Um, and then down here, we got the little um, four piece collage going on. And down here, I actually forgot to change the size. So it did it in a three to four is what I believe. But again, came out with something that was more different. I think that for Ideogram, um, it's definitely on the side of being way more natural and realistic compared to the Dolly 3 versions in Kittle and in my designs here. This one was done here uh, with Dolly 3. So I actually like this one a lot and this one, though it had a gap, but this would be easy to fix with a duplicating maybe this side and adding it in there. And that was it for these ones. So now on to the outputs that I like the least, which is really not surprising to me. I rarely like anything that Canva does but um, they were interesting. This would be the only one that kind of would work. Um, these just have really weird shapes here. It kind of picked up on the person silhouette doing that again. And this one just had little weird little things at the top. Um, these ones are okay. The, the one right here and maybe this one. Um, but for the most part, I wasn't liking anything that Canva put out in this particular prompt. The other prompt that I used um, in the first video of this did have a better output with Canva, um, though I will say it still wasn't something that I personally would use on my own shop. Okay, so finally moving on to the newer AI tool, well, new to me AI tool that I have been using that I like the brush stroke effect the most, and that is Playground AI. So let me know down in the comments if this is one that you all have tried out before. I'm testing it for a lot of different types of products and creating templates for my communities. And so I'm super excited to be using this one just because once you have a good um, design that you've put in here and you've turned it into a template, you can essentially use that just to mass create. So if I was going to be mass creating these brush strokes, I would be using this playground tool just because of how easy it is to quickly change what's in the brush stroke as well as the color palette and then quickly add text if I wanted to. So once you've created a design, if you are in here, which is just like their little canvas app, I would call it, 
you can actually click on this change colors here and it's going to let you choose any of these pre-built color palettes or you can actually add in your own, which is super, super unique. So I'm gonna change it to something completely different, this uh, Pastel Dreams one, and it's just going to change the overall effect of everything that's going on in this design with just one click of a button. It does give you four different options if you have the pro version down here, so you can sift through the four and choose the one that you like the most. So as you can see, it did still the same type of style, so it's still like the watercolor really natural look, but it changed it to that color palette. And if I want to go ahead and uh, save this one, I'll just share this one or export this one. And I can upscale it by four in here. Again, if I'm using the pro version and also remove the background, which is super, super nice just to be able to get this done. Um, if I had added text in here, I could add a text at the bottom or I could just leave it as a uh, blank design just like this. And then I would just download it and then we're good to go from there. But since I want to go ahead and change the colors again, I'll just go back in here and I'm gonna change it to be something like really dark and moody just to like these earth tone ones just to see what it does. And then I'll show you how you can even easily change the flowers to something else. Okay, so this one didn't change it to like as dark as I wanted it to be, but I do like what it did with the colors and I do like what it did with the flowers as well too. So I'm gonna change it one more time to like, let's try this vintage warmth one and see if that gives us something darker. And then I'll show you how to quickly change the flowers to something else. Okay, so that one still is keeping it pretty light though the flowers are really pretty. With every um, output that I've done, it's not anything that I wouldn't use. So I would be saving these as I go, um, just so to make sure that I save them all and not waste them because you never know when you might use something else or add a different type of quote and have all of these designs just saved. There's no reason to waste them just because they might not be exactly what you're looking for at the time. So let's say I wanted to change the flowers to be like, roses with thorny vines. So all I'm going to do is come down here and then I'm going to click on what if it were and it will just pre-fill that in there. And then I'm going to say all the flowers were thorny red roses with black thorn vibes. I wanna be pretty specific on the type of flowers as well as the thorny vines because I'm trying to change the overall design. So as you can see, this gave me exactly what I asked for and I really like it as far as, far as some of the thorns coming out, but I want to change the colors because those don't match. So I'm going to look for something dark that won't mess up the roses still and see what I can find. Okay, so I ended up choosing Twilight Fade and it did change the colors of the roses because it's matching it to the color palette of the Twilight Fade palette. And I actually don't mind it at all. It looks really, really good. I like the four different brush stroke colors, but the best thing about this I think is that when I've tried this and I've ran this many, many times, especially with this particular template, is that nothing is ever cut off on the edges. So I don't have to worry about trying to fix that like I've had to with some of the other AI tools. And it's just really, really simple to easily take one of these and then make these into 20 or 30 designs in just a few short minutes. This is another one that I created that is definitely a different type of style, but still Still the brush stroke pattern. So the elements look much more similar to something like Dali or Kittle and much more bright. And so these ones are really fun to play around with as far as easily changing the color palette. So it's the pastel dreams right now. So let's change it to this sunset mystery. And as you will be able to see, it will give you a completely different effect and output with just one click of a button. And there we go. So this one, because it already had the background on here, what I would need to do is go ahead and go to export up here and then click remove background just so I can make sure that it removes the background without messing up the brush stroke. That is the only issue. So you do wanna make sure when you are doing this that if you set this up as a template so that you can keep reusing it to make sure that you create it with a white background so that it's not always adding in a background that uh, works with the color 
palette that you did. So this one would be okay to use. It didn't get all of it right here. This one was, but it removed some of the black part. So um, I wouldn't necessarily use any of these because it picked up too much of the background. So again, it's really important to start out with the white background from the beginning. So I will have a link to this template down in the description below if you do want to give Playground a try. This will make it really easy for you to get a template that is already formatted for the brush stroke style, and then you can easily change your flowers to other types of elements. It doesn't even have to be flowers. It can be something completely different. Um, and then of course change the colors and then add any text um, to the bottom or the top if you want. So if you have been trying this brush stroke trend, definitely let me know down in the comments which of these AI tools you have had the best luck with. Um, again, I love trying new AI tools. I know it can be a bad habit to be collecting these, um, but this one I think is different with their ability to set up a template and be able to quickly go in and change it for something else. I do have quite a few other videos coming out with different ways to use templates for different types of products. So so do be sure to look out for those in the near future. And as always, thanks so much for watching.